Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 438. Uh, each week we gather here to uh, uh, review the questions and answers given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have uh, Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.com. He's uh, also uh, a um, Google product expert on the uh, AdSense uh, community. Uh, Masataki is based in Wimbledon, uh, in a suburb of London. We also have David Razem. David uh, is uh, a leading internet marketer. He uh, is based in um, the southwest of um, uh, the no, no, the southeast. Southeast, <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, in Sussex, West Sussex. West Sussex, yes. Okay. In the southeast. Mm -hmm. And David is um, um, David can be found at davidrosam.com. Um, Micah Fisher Court Kirsten just joined us a, a few seconds ago. Micah is uh, um, the uh, coordinator of uh, an SEO meetup group in uh, uh, very close to Silicon Valley. Um, Micah is also the uh, director of SEO for Turn River Capital in the United States. And uh, Tim Kappa. Tim is based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. He uh, is a Google product expert um, on the uh, Google My Business community. And Tim runs a, a, an agency north. Uh, onlineownership.com. All right, let's look at our first um, question. Um, this one, it's it's from, um, I might not be able to read all this, all this out, I'm an old man. Um, but Karen A. Allen Sutherland asked a question titled Keyword Golden Ratio. Um, Karen said, hi guys, I need help. I'm oh, really? Um, he said, I'm currently working on my keyword golden ratio keywords for an item. And I have a lot of all in title search results of between eight and 10 and Google monthly search volume of 50, which when I use the formula gives me a keyword golden ratio of 0 0.20 for all in title of 10 and uh, KGR of 0.16 for all in title of eight. So my question is, what is better? The KGR of 0.2, uh, all in title 10 and search volume 20 and, and no, I can't read anymore. How about it guys? I feel like someone put this together just to, just to mess with you and trying to read through this, Jim. Um, <laughs> I don't even know where to go with this. Um, I, honestly, I haven't heard of the KGR type of theme before. Um, yeah. Has anybody else? Yeah, I've heard of it. Um, um, I came across it several years ago. Um, it's invented by uh, some self-proclaimed internet marketing guru, um, and he sells um, courses about it. Um, and as I didn't buy the course, I never found out what it was really. <laughs> no, it's one of those things that uh, people invent so they can sell courses. Um, it may work. I don't know. I've never tried it. Um, so having never tried it, because I distrust things invented by people to flog courses. Um, I can't help you, I'm afraid. Um, as I say, I, I don't know. It might work, but I think the odds are that uh, it's um, 
probably not something that's very useful. But there we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> When all else fails, build a better website. And all right, some um, better content. Own, uh, Alan Sutherland, I'm, I'm afraid we we can't um, uh, help you with this. And uh, um, I see that you did ask at the end of your question. Uh, I'd love to hear of uh, others' results or if I am wasting my time here. We, we feel, and I don't know the guys can object or not, but we feel that um, it's the latter. All right, let's go to our next question on our run list. It's number two. Chadwin Williams uh, asks, do I disavow these links? One of my websites moved to a new location. I successfully changed the address where it needed to be changed except for a handful of business directories. I can't access these business directories and, and I emailed them of the new changes. I now have three directories listing wrong information. Do I disavow these links? And if so, how do I go about doing this? Right. If, like, if it's three directories, well, like Martin said, there's no point disavowing you know uh, those links because it's not about the link coming back to you it's about information where your location is which will still be visible um but let's put it this way if you can't even email them um and then uh, update your information i'm guessing those are like third fourth fifth tier quality kind of things and it's not even going to make a difference mate just get a couple of better decent ones out there some of the top tier uh directories cyclex uh one two three local shit like that get a couple of better ones keep those ones there every six months email them again maybe one day they'll change them but no don't panic don't sweat it a bit of this you know a bit of stuff out there is not going to make or break anything <laughs> Yep, um, I loved Michael Martinez's uh, matter of fact answer. He said, uh, disavowing won't accomplish anything. There will always be wrong information on the web. It's nothing to worry about in most cases. Until you absolutely fail to get the new domain ranking for anything, uh, brackets, uh, earning traffic, really, don't let this become a distraction. You've done your due diligence. All right, we set to go to number three on our run list. There we are. Number three, Mari Sa. Um, does Google penalize long URLs? No. Um, the site I'm working on has some really long ones, and I wasn't planning on changing um, what's already there um, unless there's a good reason to. Um, I like Christine Hansen's answer. It's just no. Yeah, the only exception to that, if you're, is if you're longer than like what two thousand fifty-six characters or something. Basically, it's not that it's penalized at that point, but like it can't read the URL anymore. Um, it's like there's essentially a limit in the length of the URL. Outside of that, no. I haven't read that many words in, 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 in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody else on this one? Okay. Number four in our run list. Um, Sadat Rayid Adawa um, asks a question. It's titled, Hello. Oh, sorry. I have a few questions about foundational links. Um, Sadat said, Hello, SEOs. I have a few questions about foundational links. One, are they safe in Google's eyes? Uh, brackets, penalties. Uh, two, should I build foundational links to the home page or to the specific pages I want to rank? Uh, can I rank a low competition keyword 
with just foundational links. Can I show my ignorance and ask what a foundational link is? No. <laughs> Are you going to tell me what a foundational link is? <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm in good company. <laughs> In, in, in theory, they're meant to be established sources, which also then puts an entire oxymoron to the fact that he says, can I build links from it? Like, unless you've got a super fucking product, one of these established sources won't be linking to you any day soon. And if you can get one, or just go and grab one, it, in theory, do you know what I mean? Um, but then, of course, other people consider like directory links to be foundational. So it, it's like uh, most people like it, it's <laughs> it's all a load of like bollocks, really, to make basically make link building sound super snazzy. The big problem is is in the whole thing there is where he's like i want to build links that's the problem and the crux of it all okay thank you tim and to ask so uh, okay so to theoretically answer this thing um if it's a local business it's going to, your link is going to be to your homepage. Uh, or if you are a multi-location business, that particular link for that direction, for that location, will go to that location page in sight. Okay, so it makes sense, right? Um, if it's a foundational link from Wikipedia about a particular thing on your uh, on site, then that link and any wiki edit editor is certainly going to uh, only allow it to um, that particular page citing that source if they feel it's appropriate. If, like, you've somehow said social media profiles, Web 2.0, sweet Jesus, uh, social media will be uh, typically to the main site as a brand. You're not going to build them to internal pages. Like, why would that make any, any sense whatsoever? Web 2.0s have had it, send it anywhere because they shit as it is. Just destroy your site, like, today. Go for it, wherever you want to send them, mate. Okay, thank you, Tim. All right, let's roll on to number five on our run list. This one from Hanky Jacobson. It's titled, Do I Need a Plugin to Make Sure My Pages Are Indexed? Uh, Hanky goes on to say, so my blog has been active for a little over a year and has quite a bit of content, some increasing traffic, and I have some articles on page one of Google. Um, my content seems locatable for searches, but I, I just checked my indexing and it appears that my URLs are not indexed with Google. And he checked it at um, a search, uh, HTTPS, uh, full colon, slash, slash, um, S-E-A-R-C-H, dot Google, dot com, uh, slash, search, dash, console, slash inspect. Yesterday, I submitted all of the pages of my blog and requested in indexing. Uh, now what? It seems that uh, I wait. Um, do I, I re recheck um, again in, in the Google Search Console in a day or two? Um, what will um, have this URL indexing change for me? Do I need a, a plug-in to make sure that my pages and posts are indexed correctly slash regularly. 
any insight uh, linked to how to or super easy explanation will be highly appreciated. Thanks. Hmm. Okay. So since November last year, um, Google's taken a sweet ass time indexing stuff. When you click through why they try and give you an explanation about like apparently uh, quality, but we all know that's crap because of the shit they have in they do indexing crawl all the time. So essentially it's, I think it's just something to do with, uh, they've probably got problems in keeping their data warehouses cool or something. And they, you know what I mean? So they haven't got enough of it. That's essentially what's going on. Um, if obviously if obviously you obviously you, you're not blocking anything until you, you know you're not inadvertently blocking anything with robots txt or anything like that so you know you don't need any plugins your site should have a um site map um you uh, in your google search console just add your site map Every time you add a new piece of content, your site map updates, that updates in search console, Google's aware of it. Um, other thing you can do also is like, I mean that, and other thing is you can do is, um, you know, uh, make sure that obviously content is interlinking to other relevant bits of content. It just helps Google find that, you know, so they may not process that page on the site map, but they may, come back to a popular page on your site that is now saying, hey, guys, we've got an updated guide to XYZ. You link through to the new one. That can sometimes help it, it, it get uh, obviously indexed a little bit quicker. But no, things are super slow at the minute. Just as long as obviously Google can crawl your site, you've um, chucked your site map into Google Search Console. Um, and and yeah, it's super slow at the minute. It'll just take time. Um, and and that's pretty much it, as long as you've done those two things. Um, yeah, you can you can submit URL and search console. Um, that's not gonna make it go faster. Uh, you can submit it and just wait, you know. Um, that's just the way the cookie crumbles now in 2022, things are uber slow. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? Moving on to number six on our run list. It's titled, How Do I Avoid Competing Against Myself? It's from Daniel Wood, who uh, asks, uh, he said, I'm new to SEO and I wondered if someone could help me. I'm working on a website for a company that which operates uh, in two two counties he means two countries um i want to create service pages for each county um firstly i will create all services pages for one county so for example if it was a window cleaner and window painter services for norfolk and suffolk what about the main navigation bar that links uh, to um, window cleaning and window painting. I assume this would be another general page listing all locations and describing the service, which could then link to the location specific service pages. But how do I avoid competing against myself for these location specific service pages where the main service page also has the locations in the text body as keywords. Also, for example, if I'm aiming for the keyword window cleaning Norfolk for the Norfolk uh, specific page, but the window cleaning keyword is for the genetic page. Goodness me, I can't keep up. Um, yeah, yeah, so look, essentially, let's call it Bob's Window Services, okay, dot com. Bob's Window Services is going to have one service page for window cleaning where you incorporate, you know, both Suffolk and Norfolk into it. You have one window cleaning and you incorporate both Suffolk and Norfolk into it. 
you don't need to go and create additional pages now you do create location pages for your your window cleaning uh, for your norfolk and for your suffolk window window services and you will have two sections in there describing in norfolk uh you know a bit about your window cleaning and you can say read more and link to your main service page which is much more detailed only one you only need one service page and then you can describe your window cleaning um your window whatever a little bit of a brief intro on that in the area uh because uh, and i guess you've just taken too random because those counties are way too far apart i'm taking i'm guessing you've taken just two random ones but I'm guessing you're closer together and which if we knew what they were, you could probably tie them in a lot nicer. Um, but no, so you're going to have uh, your normal service pages on site. You can also say, yep, look, we operate this area um, and uh, we are also operate in this area for the for the service. Um, obviously, more a bit more detailed explanation of, of the service, uh, lead times, quotes, da, 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 your, you know, a proper full on service page for your window cleaning and a proper full-on thing and you will also say you know areas we're operating norfolk and suffolk which it's kind of weird because they're so far apart that like in terms of local and unless you've got two gmbs running for each different area which technically you shouldn't because it sounds like it's the same business within a service area so i'm guessing norfolk and suffolk aren't your things because one's in the south one's in the north and i'm like well um, you know, they're not going to compete against each other, but it is going to be very weird for a local pack because you're so far apart, right? But one service page for window cleaning, one service page for painting, and you obviously have all your services, how to, da, 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 and these are the locations we, we service. Um, check out our Norfolk page also if they want to go through or check out our Suffolk page. Uh, equally, your Norfolk page is all just, you know, like location pages, da, 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 and these are the services we offer. See more back to the actual service page. See more on your painting back to that, right? Um, don't overthink this. Your location page for that area is what's going is gonna, gonna to work for you. You don't want one for window cleaning Norfolk uh, because... I don't really don't think like actually if it was Norfolk and Suffolk you wouldn't really be duplicating in that sense and it would actually be far easier because they're so far apart you wouldn't have any cross contamination but like in the real world you're not servicing those two counties which are 150 200 miles apart um you know what I mean so uh, yeah in actually in the real world Suffolk and Norfolk you could actually do two pages because they're so far apart uh, they're going to be their own individual entities. But um, I'm guessing your service area is much closer than that. So, yeah, you only need one location page. Um, and, of course, you're going to have your GMB tied into that. Uh, don't forget your structured data markup, including, including your HAZMAP, which is your GMB, and then your location page. So, yeah, you're, 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 over, you're, over, you're going to overcook the, the thing. You're overthinking it. Thank you, Tim. All right. So anybody else on this one? Okay, let's go to Jay Horvath's uh, question number seven on our run list. It's titled, Do you always base your keyword difficulty on the US database? Um, Jay said, hi, all. Any help on this would be much appreciated. I can't seem to find a straight answer anywhere on the web, which makes me think it may be a dumb SEO question. When doing a keyword research, do you always base your keyword difficulty, brackets KD, on the US database, even if targeting another country's audience? There are many keywords with a high um, keyword difficulty um on the us database but with very easy difficulty levels when other countries are selected say um, australia where i am from um what uh, does this mean I i'm guessing that i can't just go ahead and target a keyword which has a low difficulty in australia 
and high in the US and then expect to rent for all the, of the Aussies that search that term. Are these false positives? Any clarity around this would be much appreciated. Cheers. I guess I just don't understand the question. There are other countries? Uh, no, it, it, in all seriousness, um, yeah, I'll, I'll the it's it's the same thing in terms of search volume. You need to know based on the country that you're you're in or focused on, um, and adjust your um, analysis as as such. Whether it's search volume, keyword difficulty, et cetera, um, you you want to make sure that you have a good sense of what your specific market that you're focused on it, it has um, and how difficult it's going to be. So am I always basing it on the U.S.? Absolutely not. Um, I'm making sure that if I'm looking to uh, do the work abroad for, uh, for me abroad, um, for another country that I've adjusted the database and looking at it from that perspective. Thank you, Micah. Anybody else? All right, let's uh, move along to number eight. Number eight in our run list is titled Looking to Learn How to Speed Up a WordPress Websites from Jack P. Smith. He goes on to say uh, I'm lo he's looking to learn how to speed up WordPress websites at the moment. I use WP Rocket, which is a hit and miss, but um, looking to learn a better way than just using plugins for everything. Uh, are there any recommendations? Uh, I mean, Michael um, sort of nips it on the head there. Uh, the thing is with I think that a lot of the thing that boils down to is is the theme you've used. Um, I mean, if you want to resolve this entire thing, is actually um, have a develop uh, a proper developer build, not plug and play with Elementor and all that crap. Actually, um, you, you know, uh, build your templates for each particular um, section on your site that you, you can then use moving forward. So it's built without all the code bloat, right? Uh, that would be in the ideal, uh, ideal real world, but most people just plug and play now. And that comes with this inherent code bloat. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you could look at a lighter, a lighter theme. Um, Images are a big one, depending on how you've, uh, you know, depends what the theme you're using. Is it using like one massive header per page? Most people don't understand about, you know, you, you obviously need to be using the right size image firstly. Um, you don't want to be too big or else, you know, that the still has to serve it. You can compress them yourself before putting it in. Uh, Google has its own one called Squoosh, S-Q-U-O-O-S-H. So um, you take your image, chuck it into that, and just it compresses it, uh, which will help you a lot anyway, depending, you know, you, you may not have massive images, but let's say you do have one big one of those stupid header images, um, or you're like very, I don't know, ph photography orientated. So yeah, that would be quite good to squoosh your stuff. Um, yeah, you know, there's a whole lot of things. Um, yeah. Uh, but nine times out of ten, it's the theme you're you, you're using. Um, and if you, you don't have uh, resources um, for um, resources for actual proper development, um, then it's worth checking out lighter themes. But then you still want to keep your things in mind, like uh, you know your images moving forward, uh, things like that. Yeah, I think the only thing that Michael's left out that I would have in there is, is having too many plugins. Um, it's very, very easy to, to end up with 
30 old plugins all waiting down your uh, your WordPress site. Um, the other thing is it's not just um, it's not just the the number of plugins some uh, plugins that have the same function weigh the site down more than others. Um, so you know there's you can do a lot of googling and find out what people say is lighter weight than another. You can uh, use something like GT metrics and do your own measurement. Um, but um, plugins are um, a real gotcha, or can be a real gotcha. Thank you, David. Thank you, Micah. All right, so let's go. If there's nobody else, um, I'll go to number nine. Mari Sa has another question for us. Um, she asks, uh, it's titled, uh, what do I do with the keywords the site is currently ranking? Mari said, I'm rebuilding a website based on the current site that did not have an SEO strategy, but is ranking. Um, what do I do with the keywords the site is currently ranking for versus the focus keywords that are new that I'm building in to not hurt its ranking. I'm not sure if I'm asking this uh, correctly. The pages are already ranking. Uh, some of the keywords they are ranking for are not the most relevant. Some of the content needs to be edited, but I want to preserve the rankings. Um, some of the keywords the page uh, is ranking for are not even showing up on the page. How is this? Um, where to begin? So at a high level, um, if you're making content changes and you're worried that it's going to affect the rankings, you can always roll back. Um, so unless something has been old for a very, very long time and untouched, um, I think it's okay to test the changes. Um, that part, I think, let, let's establish that. Secondly, then if there are keywords which are not relevant, then just you need to make sure to bring that up. Um, and get an established understanding that, hey, we're going to move away from those old keywords because of the not the non-relevance of them. And that that's more of a, uh, making sure that everybody's agreed upon it before you start making the changes. And then after that, easy go. And then thirdly, in terms of the new topics, um, that's where, again, you need to uh, understand what is the... Uh, what should the structure be and whether or not um, you've, you've put the accurate importance of the new pages relative within the site. And it may be that maybe those new topics are, are more important and need to be addressed uh, in a more important way. And, and maybe some of the other terms suffer a little bit in order to target uh, what are the more relevant or maybe you know more effective terms. And I think you just kind of got to, uh, put that context together to get a, and, and lay that out in advance of what those changes are so that you've, you've built the trust and the understanding of what you're trying to do. Um, and I think that will cover many of the issues that, that you're, you're kind of afraid about. Thank you, Micah. Anybody else? This is the last question for the evening. You have a chance to, uh, it's your name in lights. All right, so I'm going to click the button and I think it's uh, the last question for the night. Yes, it is. It's thank you for watching time. We'll be back uh, next week to do this um, all again. Um, and we thank you. But I, I, I can't uh, go without thanking uh, people like Christine Hansen, like Michael Martinez, um, people who turn up every day on uh, the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group and, and answer these questions. 
And of course, you guys who turn up here every week um, to um, uh, make make uh, Domicio questions such a, a, a rich resource. Um, yeah, if nobody has any objections, I'll declare this meeting closed. Okay, I'm just going to find the right button to click. <laughs>